Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to develop a custom Moodle block. In this session, we will discuss global configuration. In our last two sessions, we went over instance configuration where each individual block could be configured in whatever way the either the instructor or the student would want to configure the block and just depend upon the, the permissions or the capabilities. And in the case of global configuration, it is different in that whatever setting is set at the global level, it will touch every block of a specific type. Let's go ahead and go to the development page. And again, we'll follow the tutorial, the blocks tutorial. And we'll go down to globalization. And it's pretty straightforward. We need to, I'll let you read this on your own. We'll need to add a settings.php file to our hello world directory. And then we simply need to copy this little code snippet here. And again, the framework is giving us, is providing us with this settings object. It's created during setup at some point. And it's giving us, it has a, a method or a function that accepts the parameter of a new admin setting. Underscore whatever it is. Like in this case, it's ad, admin setting underscore heading. And this is a new admin setting underscore config check box. We will need to make some modifications to, we'll need to add some strings to our language file for both the header and, or the heading, and also for the, the check box that we're going to add as, as part of our global configuration. First thing we need to do here is rename the block class to hello world and we'll do the same down here and here and the strings We'll just copy this over and add those strings to our language file. Just so we have some kind of a reference here. We're going to need four new strings. So there's four and copy this. Okay. So we want one to be a header config. description config
Oop, little mistake there. Recopy the header config. Put it in the right spot this time. And we will we're not gonna allow or disallow HTML. We're not gonna we're not gonna we're not going to the tutorial has an example of where we don't allow or allow or disallow HTML and we're, our block is just more conceptual and so we're going to have a label for we're going to set the background label set background and description set background I guess I could have just copied that in up above there huh but I didn't so we'll just copy it here and one more okay now we just need to add some relevant information here so we'll just how we'll call this hello world global config and all this description of and this is the label for the set back background and we'll just call it set background and description of okay next we need to go back to the settings and you'll see that there's a little we can go in and just take a look at this set back let's we'll call it set BG no we'll go ahead and spell it out set okay now let's take a look at the the tutorial and find out what what this is and there's a convention that, that, that they use instead of reading this reading this I'll let you read it but simply means that if you use this convention that there will be a table created that will hold this setting if you don't use this convention then it'll actually end up in the, con the global config object and then if you're trying to access the the setting it differs in how you actually access the so if, if you don't if you don't use I guess I could probably read this it says accessing global config data now that we have global data defined for the plugin we we need to know how to access it within our code if save if save if you saved your config variables in the global namespace you can access them from the global config object like so so config then the 
arrow pointer and then the name of the the setting or the field if if as recommended you save your config config variables in a in a custom namespace for your block meaning the name of the block then you can access them via a call to get config and here's the format there so that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it on that. So that's what that's what this is. This is the global. This is the custom namespace, and this is the setting. These two are strings that we just added to our language file, and then this is the default setting, and we're going to have it. In this case, a checkbox is either going to be one or a zero. It's either checked or not checked. So we're going to leave it at default not checked. Okay. One other thing before we can actually enabling global configuration. Since 2.4, the following line must be added to the blocks, your block class file in order to enable and this is simply has configuration then we want it to return true so we'll copy that and we'll go to our block class and we'll scroll down to the bottom and we will add one more instance method now any of the any of the functionality that you add or take away from that, that comes with the base the block base is is defined in that block base and one one way to access that is you can actually go to github.com and we and you can view the source code it's a, it's a repository you can you can view the source code and find whatever it is you're looking for and we can look, they have, it says here there's 16 branches. So we can select, scroll down and select. We've got Moodle 2.6 stable. So that's what we want to, to look at. And I, I know this from playing around this a little bit that the file that we're looking for is under blocks and it's block moodle block dot class dot php that contains the base block base class now in in this in this class there's all sorts of there's uh instance variables member variables of the class as you can see here and then there's the functions and get content we've used that uh, so this is what you can add this is what what you can this is the api that you can use to add or take away functionality to your block and there's some functions that you should override i think we talked about that in an earlier session and there's some that, that you shouldn't override can't remember exactly where that was in the documentation let's take a quick look at that again let's see if you can't find that i remember appendix a And then here it said the methods are 
divide into three categories. Those that you may override, they may use and override in your block. Those that you may not, those that you may not override but might want to use. And those internal functions that should ne neither be used nor overridden. And then it goes down and explains which is which is in which category. And it also explains that same thing in in the source code. But the point is is that this is the file that you would look for to find the different features or functionality that you can add or subtract from your block and whether or not you should override a, a function or not. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a go back to our example. And now we need to update the version. And we'll update that. When we log in, we should see an update. An update. There it is. We have a new version. Go ahead and upgrade it. Success. The settings shown below were added during your last Moodle upgrade. Make any changes necessary to the defaults and then click the Save Changes button at the bottom of the page. Okay, so we're just going to leave it as it is. Okay. I added the admin bookmarks block so I don't have to continually go down to site administration. So let's just go in to the plugins block the site administration plugins blocks manage blocks page and we should have a settings link next to the hello world block and there and there it is there and we were just at this page but just wanted to show you show you that now let's let's go ahead and just set this to we want it enabled so we save changes and now we need to add some we need to do some modifications to the to the block class and but I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and stop right here and do that in our next session. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.